Hey, this is a match once again. Welcome back to another video. This is another paid request. This time from Vante. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, re reviews, video game stuff, comparison videos, randomness, whatever, you can feel free to send it. PayPal is usually the best bet. Also, have a Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And you wanted me to talk about the 1997 film Steel. Directed by Kenneth Johnson, who worked on the TV show V with Robert England and Mark Senior back in the day. He also worked very heavily on the Incredible Hulk TV show with Bill Bixby and Lou Fredno. He also directed Short Circuit 2, which I'm a big fan of Short Circuit 2. Now, this is based on the comic book, and I don't know much about the comic book character. I know mainly from the Death and Return of Superman, that storyline. And John Henry Irons, you know, building this suit, thus the Man of Steel. Remember, the suit looking pretty cool. Now, this is a bad film. Don't get me wrong. This is a bad film for many reasons. I will admit, though, watching it, because I haven't seen this film in decades, I kind of had fun with it, with how bad it was. I wasn't bored, I did laugh at it, and I don't think this is the worst DC film because I can at least laugh at this movie. I would say I'd rather watch this again than Catwoman, or, well it's not DC, but I'd rather watch this than Elektra. I would rather watch this <laughs> train wreck over Captain Marvel, or The Eternals, or... Again, that's not DC, but I'll say this, and people get pissed at me. I'd rather watch this than Man of Steel. There you go, there's a hot take. I do not like Man of Steel at all. I think it pisses me off as a Superman fan. Maybe because I'm I don't know much shit about Steel. This can't piss me off because I don't know much about the character. And Man of Steel I can't laugh at. I just get pissed for a variety of reasons. This didn't piss me off. It just kind of laughing at the film it's goofy as silly as stupid but I found it laughable and sort of a so bad as good type of thing so that's the way I looked at with this film again it is a bad film Shaquille O'Neal the story is he's with the military Annabeth Dish who is Monitor Reyes in the X-Files Judd Nelson from the Breakfast Club Charles Napier Murdoch from Rambo for Split Part 2 they're all with the military. They're testing his weapons, sonic weapons and lasers. Judd Nelson wants to test the weapon on a higher frequency. That was a bad mistake. A senator dies. Annabeth Dish's character gets paralyzed from the waist down. Judd Nelson gets kicked down the military. He wants these weapons. He, he builds these weapons again to sell to gain members and the black market. Shaq finds out about this. Gets with Annabeth Dish. Gets with his uncle Joe, played by Richard Roundtree of Shaft fame. And is going to get the guns off the streets, fight the bad guys, and save the day. Now, Shatil O'Neill, he was absolutely miscast. I could see what maybe the studio was thinking. Number one, he was very popular at the time with the kids, basketball. And I like Shaq, I like Shaq as a basketball player. When he's himself, he could be a likable guy. Watch him on Inside the NBA with Charles Barkley. They work so well together. He could be funny and personable and likable. And you see little bits of his heart, the, the gentle giant. When he's smiling, when he's being nice to his grandmother... The bit with Annabeth Dish, yes, it's corny, it's silly, but him giving that genuine smile with Annabeth Dish and they do the little finger thing. I saw a bit of warmth and heart in there that made me light Shaq. It's just that, again, he was very, very badly miscast because he was not an actor. He wasn't ready for this. I'd rather watch this than, than Kazam. But both, I mean, Shaq was not ready for acting. To memorize lines and f let them flow naturally, that wasn't his forte. 
Dizzy wasn't a trained actor. He was a basketball player. And that shows very much. I don't know, at one point there was an interview with the director and he said he would like someone like Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes would have been great. You know, if he, if he had not passed away, Steve James from American Ninja 1 and 2 would have been the perfect steal. Steve James would have been perfect. I mean, if you did the movie nowadays, Idris Elba would be a good choice. I'll say one thing. I will watch this John Henry movie more than that shitty Terry Crews John Henry movie. That's a film that's a fucking garbage film. This is garbage, but it's funny garbage to me. So Shaq is very badly miscast. Uh, the suit is fucking awful. I know the whole point is that it's homemade. It's supposed to look like shit. It's homemade. Home Depot wouldn't make this shit look this fucking bad. And... It just looks terrible. It does look like a bad cosplay. You looked at the comic book image and it looks so cool. You looked at this image, it looks laughable. Especially with the mask with all this is uncovered. So when people shoot a machine gun, one bullet just has to hit here, 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 or here, and the movie's done. Done like dinner. So the fact that the mask doesn't ca cover half the fucking face and Shat's big chin and mouth. The fact that he can barely move without the armor. So with the armor, he moves slower than Robocop. That stuff doesn't help. It doesn't help with the action scenes. So the action scenes come off as lackluster and forgettable. There's a couple decent explosions here and there, and a helicopter exploding, falling down to the ground, and Shaq has to save this cop. Uh, some of the side weapons look decent, sh blowing out this bank, and then using layers, uh, layer, layers, lasers to open up the safe. That looked kind of cool. But, going through the film itself, let's say they do the weapon testing, I did laugh at Shaq going, no, to Judd Nelson. And Judd Nelson, I actually liked him in the movie, because he was playing a sniveling weasel of a character. That, yeah, he was taking a paycheck, but he had a little bit of smirk on his face, I could see a lot of times, and just being a bad guy, and... You know, there's this one woman that's trying to fuck with him, so he blows out the cables of the elevator to make her and the other die, and the elevator go down, and then tosses his other guy. Yeah, I need some, uh, need an assistant. You want to help me? And I like Judd Nelson, so it was nice to see him in there. Yes, it was an easy paycheck, but it was fun seeing him a little bit of a sniveling weasel villain. I like the fact that Charles Napier is telling Shaq, hey, you know what, we got John Nelson kicked out, come back to make weapons for us. And it's like, after what happened to Annabeth Dish's character is called Sparks. So it's that name Sparky. It's just a weird name. But it's like, what happened to Sparks? I'm sitting there going, does no one give a shit that a senator was killed? You do know in this whole scene a senator was killed as well. A female senator as well. So the fact that this weapon testing with Charles Napier is still going on after a fucking... Not just a senator, but a female senator died? That's probably the most unrealistic part of the movie. <laughs> after that, five seconds, this is shut down. You're reassigned. So... Again, they're all talking about Annabeth Dish's character, but I'm sitting there going, what about the senator that died? <laughs> no one gives a shit about her. Who gives a fuck? I mean, I do think Shaq has a likable quality to him. He just was not ready for this. He was Again, he's not an actor. He's not a trained actor. So, you know, he's smiling. He has his likable bit, but just... And maybe also the fact, it does have this 90s nostalgia charm to it, where even the bad movies, it's like, okay, 
We're going to hide the guns in arcade cabinets. <laughs> We're going to have Annabeth Dish have a fucking wheelchair of lasers and she's shooting lasers at people. Hell, I thought she was more badass than fucking Steel himself. Richard Roundtree shot himself as Uncle Joe. Uh, some of the lines, like when Shat is trying to get Annabeth Dish because she's depressed and she's looked out the window of a veteran hospital. And it's like, what, you go look at the dirty ass windows and he just breaks the windows. And then he's like, picks her up and she's going, what are you doing? This is a prime example of shit happening. <laughs> I actually like that line. Or Shaq trying to sound tough and go, Sir, with your head so far up your ass. <laughs> you, you don't understand, sir. With your head up your... <laughs> so far up your ass. And he fucks up the phone. I, it's like Shaq's trying. It just... It doesn't work. But it, I did laugh at it. I mean, it has this goofy, campy demeanor. Like when they do the field test, and he's going after this robber who stole some wallets. I think it's the same guy who had the store at the beginning from Dust Till Dawn. Where George Clooney and Quentin Tarantino go in, they have the shootout, and they walk out low profile. What did I say? Low profile. I think the guy who owned that store, I think he's the guy who's robbing the wallets. And Shaq comes up and goes, it's your ass. <laughs> and he gives the wall back. He's like, you be cool. Again, like, Judd Nelson having fun. Richard Roundtree. Annabeth. I thought Annabeth Dish, actually, for what she was given, she actually did a good job. Showcases someone who's just stuck in a wheelchair. At least I'm on this goofy ass silly movie. I actually liked her in this. And like I said, when she had her wheelchair, I thought she has the lasers and she's got the Sonic. She was a, like the Oracle, uh, you know, Batman. And she was like badass. She, she, I thought she was more badass than uh, fucking Steel himself. And, you know, the way the kids are having with the lingo, that just reminds me of that time of the 90s when people were trying to talk like this. And, like I said, it's goofy. and s Just the goofy, silly nature was kind of... had a... endearing quality of badness. And let me repeat, this is still a bad movie. In particular, it's a goofy, silly look back of the 90s especially the late 90s but it's a really bad superhero movie because your superhero looks like trash he's slow as fuck but he looks like garbage and he's slower than Robocop with an actor that was not ready that could not hold a movie on its own that I mean the director even said if you don't want to cast Shaq you need some really good A-list people around him and they didn't do that so that didn't help matters and I did a, a mask that looked so cool in the comic, and then that's the. Uh, they just. Man, it looks so fucking. Cheap Jack. People shooting bullets, none of them hit this open target. And. Like I said, the action scenes kind of pale in comparison because Tanner Johnson was not known for that. Kenneth Johnson was not a comic book fan. Yeah, he worked on The Incredible Hulk, but as people would point out, that's why Bruce Banner's name was different, because he thought Bruce sounded... This is his words. That Bruce sounded gay. So thus it was David Banner. That was his words, not mine. And that's why the, you look at the Hulk TV show, there's really not much in terms of accuracy with the comics and this was felt like this felt like a glorified TV pilot that would not have been picked up just to watch the flash or John Wesley ship much more successful than this it, it just felt like a really a bad goofy bad TV pilot a little bit more budget in the, in this 
but then when we get the series it'll be a bit cheaper <laughs> and don't get me wrong I mean there's other stuff that made me laugh uh, in a bad way like when Judd Nelson is talking with this guy who's got a patch on and he offers him a hot dog I don't like pork oh it's a, it's a turkey dog oh really and Judd Nelson says the line eat the hot dog don't be one I cracked the fuck up when I heard that eat, and he's like being very serious eat the hot dog don't be one <laughs> Jesus Christ and then the music sounds like a 70's porn film and I do agree with a friend of mine that the main theme does sound like an entrance for a WCW wrestler it sounds like the intro to a TV show it sounds like the intro to a 70's TV show or 80's 70's 80's you know because again, this he did work on. Uh, I think he created the Bionic Woman. Because he worked on episodes of Six Million Dollar Man, but he created, or at least very heavily, heavily on the Bionic Bionic Woman. So again, I love Short Circuit too, but that's more his wheelhouse. Him being a, a comic book fan, this was his wheelhouse. He was the wrong director to choose. Shaq was the wrong choice. If he had Wesley Snipes or someone else. Whether it be good, I don't, I, maybe not, but it would be better. And the, the finale really does showcase the lack of expertise on Kenneth Johnson as an action director because it's, okay, Steel gets caught, and then they have a little bit of a scuffle. Again, Steel can barely move. He barely does anything during that really the villain dies spoiler because Judd Nelson shoots it bounces off the suit and goes back to Nelson hits him and you go oh no and then the ship blows up and falls on him <laughs> I laugh. see I'm I'm awfully good I think someone even did a video called awfully good this is just even the way it ends where they're all together and yeah, that this uh, type of 90s song, I forget what it was in there. I didn't, I wasn't bored, it was an hour and 30 some minutes long. Unlike these fucking two and a half hour movies nowadays. So yeah, I, I got a sort of a so bad as good nature in this where... I'm not in a rush to buy it or watch it again, but I, after over, you know, it's probably been like 20 years since I've seen this film. Not even kidding. It's been at least 20 years since I've seen this film. I'm still there going, this is actually kind of unintentionally funny. And I don't know, it just. It was goofy, it was stupid, and I laughed. I laughed at it. I don't know how else to put it. I mean, when you got fucking steel and the kid trapped, and there's a grenade, and he's got to be forced to do a free throw, to shot is not good at free throws, and the grenade, which takes like five years to explode, because that's how grenades work, he finally does it, and then when it falls, the bad guy's like, Oh no! And pfft, <laughs> this fucking reaction. The bad guy's reaction, like, Ah! Like, he had this, like, high-pitched... Which the guy, this is like a henchman of Judd Nelson, he usually has this very deep voice, but he has this, Ah! <laughs> he blows up. <laughs> oh my god. That's what I'm talking about. If no one gets the joke, I don't blame you. I thought it was hilarious. Well, at times hilarious. And I do think Annabeth Dish, I thought, actually did a good job. Richard Roundtree is always nice to see him in the movies. 
Again, Shaft is likable, it's just he's not an actor and he was the wrong fit. And again, Steel himself sucks in the movie, and that's the worst part of it. Steel himself seems like a very lame, lousy character that would not even fit in the tick ass, you know, the movie tick ass realm. He wouldn't even fit in there. And my body, I think, just now wants me to stop talking about this movie. My body just sighed. But I did laugh at it. I just wish it was a better action director. Someone that actually moved a better suit. A lot of stuff better. Better score. Doesn't look like a 70s porn film or sound that should sound like a 70s porn film. There's a lot of aspects that needed fixing. It's a bad movie. But, you know, I, yeah, I did laugh. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.